The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in this podcast belong solely to those expressing them and do not necessarily reflect the OSA Foundation Incorporated or any other group or individual. This podcast may contain dialogue or subject material that could be considered for mature audiences only. All aspects of how you play the game and the OSIP Foundation Incorporated are protected by copyright and other state and federal intellectual property laws. Unauthorized use without the express written consent of the OSIP Foundation Incorporated is strictly prohibited. If you're interested in sponsoring how you play the game, please email us at podcast at OSIPFoundation.org. Your sponsorship may be tax deductible. Well, it's that time again. It's time for How You Play the Game, the official podcast of the OSIP Foundation Incorporated. Yours truly, Jack Furlong, with you as we talk to you about what's going on as far as the world of sportsmanship is concerned. This is the first episode of the month of August. The year is 2019, and we're so glad you can be with us. Uh, as always, you can check us out online at osipfoundation.org, as well as email, which is podcast at osipfoundation.org, and our social media profiles, facebook.com slash osipfoundation, and then Twitter and Instagram are both at OSIP Foundation, hashtag how you play the game. Across the way from me, as always, the producer engineer of the show, Mr. Sean Ryan. Sean, welcome. How are you? I'm handy dandy. That's fantastic. We have a very special guest with us today, joining us all the way from just a couple of states and a couple of time zones over from the Crawfish Boxes, a uh, Sports Nation blog, a young man by the name of Mr. Bill Metzger. Bill, welcome. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Glad to talk to you, Jack. Uh, It's our pleasure. Thank you for being here. Uh, Bill, we've got you on today to uh, go over uh, something that's happened recently in the world of baseball, and that is the incident between uh, Jake Marisnik and uh, uh, Jonathan Lucroy between the Astros and the Angels. Um, Bill, you wrote a fantastic article on your blog uh, at crawfishboxes.com. Uh, about the situation and we wanted to touch base with you and get as much perspective on this as we possibly can for those of you who don't know what happened in a nutshell there was a collision at home plate between Marisnik and Lucroy uh, it, it looked to be uh, unintentional but it, it really vilified Marisnik for the situation and there's been a lot of fallout as a result of it, especially due to the uh, new rules that baseball has in place. And uh, we just got a lot to dissect. So let's start with this, Bill. Why don't you give us your take, like a general summary, you know, an op-ed, if you will, uh, that just kind of covers the entire incident with Marisnik, uh, starting with the interpretation of uh, the intent on the slide all the way through the uh, the unwritten rules that occurred when uh, the Astros visited the Angels recently. All right. Uh, uh, Jake was sent in as a pinch runner, I believe, and uh, he uh, there was a there was a hit and he rounded third and headed towards towards home. And if you look at the videos, the collision is is horrible. And uh, Luke Croy has had to have surgery on his nose. He's going to miss many weeks. He was beat up. And it's understandable that when you look at it in real time, that people would think that Marisnik tried to do it. Uh, But when you slow it down and you look at it from all the angles, what I think the general consensus is right now and the – Spokesman for from uh, Major League Baseball, Joe Torre, said as much when they issued the suspension that Jake really did not intend to do it. And, and what seems to have happened is, as he was as Merzik was coming down third baseline, uh, Lucroy was about six feet left of the home plate and was a little bit on the foul side of the of the foul line. At the time, Jake was coming in, and so Jake took a, a a turn inside of the foul line. But at the very same time that he turned inside and jumped like Superman into a headfirst slide, at that very same moment, Lucroy went into the very same space to get the ball. 
Right. And it was very diff- it was impossible really for Marisnik to change his path once he'd made it made that commitment. And so we had this terrible collision. Jake immediately after getting up he got down on one knee and tried to give comfort to to um, Jonathan LaCroix. It was um he was he he showed clear remorse from the very second it happened. Right. And then according to the Houston Chronicle, he visited uh LaCroix after the game and then he numerous times apologized over social media with convincing sincerity, I believe. Uh he almost cried in, in trying to to uh express his remorse but at the same time he still insists it was not his intent to to hurt LaCroix that it was an accident um a couple days later the uh major league baseball issued a a, a suspension a two day a two game suspension of of um Marisnik, which he is appealing um and then, of course, the Astros go to Los Angeles, and it is a very, very hostile environment. Uh, we have to understand that this isn't the only thing that's happened to the Angels fans recently. They oh, absolutely. Lo- lost a beloved player. Mm-hmm. And um, so I think in the spirit of sportsmanship, Astros fans need to take that into consideration as well. That there's a lot of hurt there. Um, but when Jake played, he was getting taunts and jeers and people were, uh, yelling at him and it was, it was an ugly thing. And, uh, then I can't remember the inning. I think it was the sixth inning. The, uh, the, uh, angels pitcher, Noe Ramirez threw a couple sliders, which are breaking balls that go on the outside of the plate. You have to chase those. And then the third pitch was a high fastball aimed right at the head. Um, Marisnik was able to dodge the the the, the pitch uh, from match keeper from hitting his head. It hit his his uh, shoulder blades, and then Jake just walked straight to home to first base. Didn't even look at the pitcher. You know, normally I'm, I've watched a lot of baseball, and normally there is chest being pumped out and people charge, you know, batters charging home of a pitcher. The, the, the dugout's empty. It's a big brawl. That would have been the typical response. I think Jake had planned this. He knew he was going to get hit and he did not want to have that big incident so he just without even looking at the pitcher just went straight to first then there was some uh shouting going back and forth between the astros dugout and the first baseman uh, future hall of famer albert pujols and pujols went towards the dugout kind of pointing his fingers at the dug at the astros dugout the rangers du- i'm sorry the angels dugout emptied the Angels bullpen from the outfield emptied. Just a few Astros came out of the dugout, but they were still really near the dugout. And and the reason why is because once this started to escalate, Jake went to his teammates and he sort of used a, a hand motion like, get back, get back. And he was trying to tell them to stop the talking and, and get back in the dugout. We're not going to do this anymore. Um, and well, I don't think I've ever seen that happen on a baseball field. And that's what my article was about that. Um, Jake had shown, uh, almost, I didn't say this, but almost a Gandhian, um, attitude of, of let's have peace. Let's not, let's, let's, let's play the game. Right. Let's not, let's love each other. That That's that. And. I've been a, a, a Marisnik fan for years. Marisnik is uh, a, a backup player. He plays with 
every ounce of energy. He gives everything to his team. He won a, an award that night for Heart and Hustle. Maybe not the best time to be giving that award under the circumstances, but uh, he, he'll, he'll lay his body out during a, a, a spring training game. And he supports his teammates. You see that. His teammates love him. He loves his teammates. So there's a lot of respect there. But in my family, we love Jake. And I have to tell my kids when Jake's not playing, because he's a backup usually, I say, well, you know, he just really doesn't hit that well. <laughs> George Springer's a better hitter, you know. Let, oh, yeah. let George Springer play. <laughs> but uh, he's a gentle man. And we know this about him. He's a, he's a very gentle he has a gentle, loving spirit. And if you are an Astros fan, you know this about Jake Moons. And so it's hurtful to me as someone who has followed Jake for, for years to see people uh, impugning all these horrible motives. And, and, and we know that that is not him. And so I, I felt a need to come to his defense. And I think you did a fantastic job of it in your article. Um, you know, the first thing I wanted to dissect with you from your comments is that, you know, as a former catcher myself, uh, I fully agree with your with your take on the collision. Uh, I think I was watching Mike Lowell on the MLB Network break it down, and his breakdown was spot on where he said, if you watch uh, Luke Roy, he's got uh, his left knee going down, into foul territory to give off the impression that he's headed that way. And Marisnik takes that jab step into fair territory in order to avoid him and slide around him that way, not realizing in that split second, and it's impossible to make that call, that the throw is going to bring Lucroy back into fair territory, and that's how the collision occurred. Um, it was just a perfect storm. It was unfortunate. And, you know, my expert take is, you know, right in line with what you just said. And I think that there's a lot of people who just don't understand that. Um, you know, you, you then went on to say about, you know, how much remorse he had and what he did after the game. Um, let me ask you this. I heard a take that, you know, Marisnik might have, you know, should have gone even a step further and, you know, picked up the phone uh, to call Luke Roy once he was in the hospital and all that stuff. Uh, do you think that there's anything that Marisnik could have done in addition to what he did to, you know, express his remorse and to go out of his way to say how sorry he was? That That's something that, is between Jake and and and, and Lacroix. Um, I, like I said, the 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 news reports weren't totally clear, but I do believe that it was reported that he did visit him mm -hmm. af right after the game. Um, and I think that the answer to that question, should he have called, really rests in uh, what kind of response. Um, what kind of receptivity there was from Lucroy, um, and whether or not Jake uh, felt that it, it that Lucroy was even able to receive that um, that gesture. Right. Um, so I, it would I think it would be nice if he did, but I don't. I'm not going to judge Jake for not because I don't really understand the dynamics and the relationship um between him and Lacroix at this time and whether or not it just seemed possible that's right. hard for us to judge from from our point of view and i think that's fair because you know the guy's laying in a hospital bed you know we don't even know if he'd be able to pick up the phone you know when he called so you know we're taking into we're not taking into account a bunch of other logistics that don't even have any emotional intent behind them you know right. um let's let's fast forward to the incident at uh, the Big A in Anaheim, you know, we talk a lot in our organization about the ridiculous unwritten rules that are maintained in baseball about plunking and about, you know, retaliation. You hit my guy. I have to protect them by hitting one of your guys. It, it really goes uh, against the common sense idea of turning the other cheek, uh, forgive and forget. 
you know, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Um, you know, do you think, do you have an opinion on this? Do you think that it's time for us as a, as a society to mature beyond this, or are we going to be stuck with this type of stuff? Well, yes, I think it, it is time. Um, and yet at the same time, we may be stuck as well. Right. Um, people, it, some people will actually take advantage of your, uh, defenselessness, unfortunately. And, uh, the unwritten rule here was broken. The unwritten rule is, okay, we have to do something. We have to retaliate. It's almost like it, it, it's, it, we're supposed to do it. We're supposed to stand up for our player, but you don't go for the head. You're not going to try to hurt the person. Right. And, um, I cannot say with a hundred percent absolute certainty that that was the intent of Noe Ramirez. Um, most knowledgeable baseball people think that a big league pitcher knows how to control his pitches. Um, um, most of the time. Right. So, uh, no one would have complained. There, ne- there wouldn't have been much of an incident if there'd been a pitch that hit Marizic in the butt. Right. Going for the head was really an escalation, right. and then I think that's where the problem was. Well, Bill, I have a question. Um, do you think that um, do you, do you think that Ramirez sort of hid his intention by waiting till the third pitch to to strike Les, um, Marisnik? Marisnik? Um, that seems to be the consensus by many people on the, on the Astro side that he threw two sliders, which would induce Marisnik to come out, out over the plate yeah. and then threw in high and high and high. Um, I think he, AJ Hinch even mentioned that. Um, so they didn't throw him at, throw at him in the for, in the beginning of the game, but the situations weren't um, conducive to that. There were men on base and such. Right. I was, mm-hmm. but, I was uh, just thinking that. I was just thinking that I didn't have the box score in front of me, but I was like, you know, if you're really that concerned about it, why aren't you trying to hit him in the first inning? And right. unfortunately, the situation dictated that that was not the time or the place. And it just makes you scratch your head about how antiquated this stuff is that you know, we got to hit this guy, but we can't do it when uh, when it might force in a run or, or put us in a worse position. I just, it's, it just leaves you wondering like, what, what am I watching? What am I thinking? Yes. Yeah. It, it's old. It's old school. I mean, it, it's from another era and no doubt about it. I mean, um, but you know, Ty Cobb, Ty Cobb went away a long time ago. Actually, a lot of things they say about Ty Cobb turned out not to really be true, but right. that's another story altogether. <laughs> I I wish that um, I I think that there could have been better leadership in the Angels organization, even in the uh, Los Angeles media. Um, there seemed to be an unwillingness to let that incident go, to give Marisnik at least a benefit of a doubt. Right. I think that I can understand the the knee-jerk reaction at first. I've had many knee-jerk reactions at first, and uh, bad calls by umpires. Oh, they can't they can't say that. And then you then you think about it a little bit later and say, yeah, maybe that was the right call. I mean, right. In the uh, ALDS last year, they they took a home run away from Altuve, and I was. Raging on the on the game recap. Oh, that was Joe West oh. at it again. <laughs> yep, Joe West. Yep. And it very at the worst, I can say it was a 50-50 call. It could have gone either way. And, right. Um, so uh, looking back at it, you cool off. I, I wish that somebody in the Angels organization had 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 said, "Okay, this this has gone far enough." Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the fans would have followed that followed that lead but um that's unfortunately that's not what happened and 
now they're still almost doubling down. I mean, there are people in the in the Angels fan world that are defending the beanie. Right. Uh, and it's, which is it's sad. It is sad. Now let me throw this at you. Uh, no pun intended. Um, you know, you mentioned the the tragedy of Tyler Skaggs, and we all know what happened there. Other than the you know the cause of death not being released until it looks like October is the most recent report. But what the Angels and their community uh, are going through is just unimaginable, and. Obviously, you know, we we feel the the same pain everywhere that, you know, that that's going on there. Do you or would you have, uh, you know, a bit more leeway or some sympathy or something like that uh, in knowing that that's still very raw and very fresh in their minds? I mean, would you have the ability or not not necessarily just you, but anyone uh, should we have the ability to say, you know what, they're going through a rough time right now, and we got to cut them some slack? When uh, when I heard about the um, no hitter that their staff threw, I was on the road. I was listening to sports radio on my radio, and it was the most <laughs> inspiring story. I came right home and told my wife. I said, a team named the Angels just through a combined no hitter in honor of their pitcher. And they put their jerseys on the mound and it's like, Oh man, did, did anyone not get teary eyed? Oh that my God. Idea? I was, I was bawling when I saw it. <laughs> yeah. I just, Oh, and, um, I, I wish that they let it sit there, but I cannot, I am not in their position. You know, you said one thing, we we all can feel it, but I don't think we can feel it quite the same way. Right. That if you're really an Angels fan, you feel it. So, I, from my point of view, I don't understand why the grief for Tyler Skaggs should turn into such uh, anger at Jake Mrisnik. I can't understand that, but that's just because I'm not an Angels fan, and so yes, I would. I would give them – I am trying to be uh, understanding of that fact. And, uh, you know, people are people for the most part. And um, I suspect that in the same circumstances, people in Houston, people in New York are probably going to have pretty much the same same response. Right. I mean, I guess if you wanted to slice the bologna thin, you would look at the idea that the – you know, the stages of grief do come with anger. And yes. and you could probably point to that. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to say that we would uh, channel that anger in, in this way. You know, you would think that there could be anger towards uh, the situation with, with Skaggs. You know, why did he go? I'm so angry at the world. I'm so angry at God. I'm, you know, you could you could write that script however you wanted to, but you know, it, again, I'm not a psychiatrist. Uh, it seems feasible that the anger could be misguided in that way, but I think you're right. Is that you know we we need to or it, it would behoove us to try and take a brief step back and maybe consider that that could have uh, some effect here. We don't know. We don't know if it does, but... Um, and, and that's that's I, that's I the whole point of my article is right. that that's what Jake was doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. He was, he, 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 even though he has insisted accurately, in my opinion, that he didn't intend to do it, he's still taking responsibility, and he is trying to show that kind of understanding. Right. That, of course they're angry and and who wouldn't be Mm -hmm. and so let's just let it go yeah they have a right to be angry we're not going to make it worse would you have reacted or at least would you have understood whether you agreed with it or not if marisnik had been upset that he was hit i mean he, he came out and said he was sorry he didn't mean it um you know to, to get hit, I can just imagine a scenario where 
you know, he would react with some anger saying, hey, I didn't mean to do it. Why are you hitting me? Would you have felt the same way about him? Would you have had a little bit of empathy for him? Or was, you know, regardless of that, what he did in just accepting it, uh, really just what was necessary to put it over the top as the, uh, the classy move uh, from the classy person? Okay, so if he had charged the mound or done something aggressive, would I have understood that? Um, you know, I, I I'll, I'll confess that when I saw those Angels players come out on the field for a split second, I was saying, yeah, come on now. Come on, Astros, get out there. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so probably yes. Yeah. And probably if he'd done it, probably the Astros fans would have been defending him. Right. That's what I meant by leadership. Right. And that's why it's so extraordinary because I've never seen a player back down. That's, mm -hmm. what, he, that's what the Astros looked like. And, and actually there were some people in the Angels fan world who were almost sticking their necks out, their, their chest out saying – yeah, those Astros—they're—they're they're just kind of uh, discombobulated right now. They're not—they're not sticking up for themselves. Mm. Um, so I would have understood it. It would have been normal. Um, and you know, there was even one line in there that uh, um, we all deplore um, these silly shows of drama, although we secretly crave them. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm no different. So part of me would have said, "Yeah, let's have a big brawl," um, but. And I, w I probably would have said, yeah, of course, um, you know, this was this was uh, provoked that he, 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 sh he needs to defend himself. But it turns out he didn't need to defend himself. He w they weren't going to fight Jake Marizic standing alone on first base. Because <laughs> that's, that's what they had. Right. They, right. they would have fought the whole Astros, but they're not going to fight Jake Marizic standing on first base. Mm -hmm. um, it was just it was it was inspired. It, it, it was amazing, and it can't, just like the way he he spontaneously and from the heart went to Lacroix when when Lacroix was hurt. Right. I, I think that when this thing started to break out on first base, it was spontaneous. It was from his heart. We need to make peace. It wasn't the the part about yeah, I'm going to get hit and I'm going to go straight to first base. I think he figured that out and, and had that premeditated. But then what happened after that? Telling the the dugout to go back and be quiet is just part of the gentle nature that uh, we've all seen and, and love about Jake. I think the other thing too, is that, you know, you yourself have shown a, a bit of maturity here in confessing the, you know, the, the way that, you know, human beings tend to react sometimes, you know, with that, with that defense mechanism. And I think that, you know, we, we tend to either try and suppress that thinking that it's not supposed to be there. And then it comes out, uh, you know, worse later, but to, to admit that that part exists kind of gives us the ability to heal from it. It's kind of like, you know, we all stop and look at the car crash as we're, as we're going down the road only yeah. later saying, oh, you know, only saying later <laughs> that, Oh, I hope they're okay. But we, we have to see the crash, you know? Uh -huh, right. Yeah. Oh, I drive right past it. Oh, well, you're a better man than me, I, Sean. I can't. I can't. I, I beep in yep. front of the person yep. because you're causing traffic. Right. We've all got how places you, to be. How can you drive right past it when everyone else is slowed down to look oh, at I'm, it? I'm beeping at the person in front of me. Move, move. I, I think Sean has a translucent car, and he. Yeah, I just, just drive right through people. It, yeah. Sean. Sean does not uh, adhere to the rules of time and space. Uh, I might not even be here right now. I. I don't think you are, but. Um. I, Go ahead. I would say that to do what what Jake did, going back to what you said about, yes, it is our nature to, to want revenge. It's deep. Mm -hmm. And um, I think to do that takes, normally takes real training, real spiritual discipline. Right. Um, which is what's so impressive that Jake was able to do this sponta spont uh, spontaneously. I mean, like I mentioned Gandhi before. I mean, his whole his whole movement was based on a spiritual discipline that made that kind of nonviolence possible. Right. And in the civil rights movement, 
Martin Luther King and 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 his followers practiced nonviolence. They practiced receiving abuse without reacting. So again, that just to me that that's the the, the spirit that Jake showed, and I'm, I'm, it's it's the way to a better world. I I wholeheartedly agree. Let me ask you this: Do you think that? Marisnik deserved the suspension from Joe Torre, and do you think that he was right to appeal it? Um, we had a editorial section on that, and uh, we took uh, we we made one article with opposing sides. Okay, and um, I took the side that I thought that the suspension was uh, mostly politically oriented. It, it had to be. Um, there are people who wanted Jake's head, and then there are people who say it was an accident. How can you punish a person for an accident? Right. And so I think that the um, that Major League Baseball split the difference, but that doesn't still doesn't make it right. Right. Um, I don't. It's not normal to. I don't think it's normal. Not in my experience of uh, punishing people for things, uh, uh, suspending people for doing things they didn't intend to do. It under the rule. 601, yes, he had to be thrown out. He had to be uh, called out, and the right. run had to be disallowed. To, that's what the rule said. Absolutely. Uh, the suspension implies that there was some, I think, that, in my opinion, uh, some people disagree, that a suspension implies that that um, there's some sort of malintent. And the league itself said, we don't think that he intended to do it, and yet they punished him anyway. On the other hand, and A.G. Hinch uh, said this, yeah, it's there was some serious injury, um, and so maybe something maybe something has to be done. It, it, it's a very gray area. Even AJ Hinch looked at both sides and and said, "I don't think there should be a suspension, but we can understand when there's that kind of a serious injury that the league has to do something." So I I have an editorial about it. I'm I'm a little bit uh, I've kind of backed. A little bit off of that, uh, I can understand. Uh, I can understand it. That makes sense, and I don't think there's a precedent set for this either. I think that you know this is the first time that I can remember since that rule was implemented that we had a very serious situation. Like we've obviously had a couple of incidents where uh, you know upon replay review they have. Uh, use that rule to either allow or disallow a run. Uh, I can think of one situation between uh, Anthony Rizzo of the Cubs, and I want to say it was against the Padres uh, in a night game in Wrigley, either last year or the year before, where Rizzo, you know, feet first slide, looked to deviate from his path, and, uh, you know, what the, he was basically called out. Uh, because he he violated that rule, and I think Joe Torre came out and said publicly later and said, "I spoke to Rizzo. Uh, you know, he 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 can't do that, and we we'll just leave it at that." But we don't have anything to look back on to tell us how to tell us how to govern this because it just hasn't happened before. So we're really you know breaking some new ground, and we're going to have to wait and see. Unfortunately, I mean, maybe the yeah. maybe. Maybe, sorry to interrupt. Maybe the mentality is someone has to be the fall guy. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, I think that's part of it. You know, it's, yeah. unfo it's unfortunate, but I mean. Yeah, a lot of Astros fans were uh, citing the Rizzo case and he wasn't suspended. And a lot of people think that there was more evidence of intent in the case of Rizzo. I'm right. not, I'm, I don't know if that's true or not, but that, that's what a lot of people seem to think. And uh, they didn't uh, suspend him. So, yeah. Um, that was one of the arguments being made. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're recording this at a time where we don't know what the uh, results of the appeal will be. It's very possible that that could be uh, heard and uh, a decision could be rendered by the time that uh, this episode releases. But for the time now, we're at least stuck kind of in this waiting game of trying to figure out, you know, exactly where do we go from here? Um, before we get into some of the uh, the deeper questions, my final question on the incident for you is, uh, you know, you started to allude to this on both sides. Um, what did you feel? What was your opinion about the responses 
from both AJ Hinch and Brad Ausmus, the managers of both teams? Well, I'm an Astros fan, right? <laughs> and I, I try to be, I'm going to try to be objective. Um, AJ Hinch, um, at right away seemed to admit that, that, um, Jake had broken the rule and that the, the, the out was the, the umpires got the right call. Um, and believe me, a lot of Astros fans, including the Astros announcers on TV, did not agree with that. They didn't even agree with the out call. And um, there's even a decent argument for that with Luke Troy being that far away from home plate, about six feet. It made it very difficult for Jake to actually make a slide. Right. I mean, he, um, and that Luke Troy, you know, we, we talked about that. Luke Troy moved to, you know, you could, you could make that argument that, that he, Jake shouldn't even been thrown, uh, called out. But right. I think when you really read the rule, it, you, you have to say that Jake needed to be called out. Absolutely. Just the way the rule reads. Yep. And, um, and, and Hinch was, was willing to admit that. Um, but Brad Osmus, former Astro, uh, walk off uh, hero of one of our NLDS games. Back in the early 2000s, I believe. Yeah, that's right. You know, we have a, you know, Osmus is a is a is a bit of a, an Astros uh, icon, one of the best catchers we ever had. Um, he, uh, I think he he jumped uh, jumped to conclusions a little bit. I think he should have been a little cooler um, by assuming that the 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 accident that the incident was intentional by, by making that statement i think he i think he fueled the uh, fueled the flames with that and um i don't think anyone's been willing to back off of that and i think that's part of what happened the other night you know you you've written in this article so many good things that you know kind of that we've we've alluded to we've pointed to the you know the beauty of the heart of Jake Marisnik. We've we've talked about the spiritual aspect. Um, let me ask. Let me start this this line of questioning off by asking it this way in a very general way. Give me your take. How does Marisnik's reaction to the entire situation exemplify how we should be living our lives? I mean, I think that we kind of began to touch on it, but as we shift from the the, the journalistic side to the more spiritual side and the and the philosophical side. What can you say about that that maybe we haven't begun to to say yet in this interview? Well we need to calm our inner violence. I think we need to to find more harmony with the love that's uh, all around us. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the way I, that's the way I, I try to live. I mean, it's a, it's a challenge. Of course, that is our, that is our challenge. And uh, as, as humans, and that includes living in harmony with the other of us who might be in that different group and try to understand their point of view and, and understand that we really do share same common humanity the same common spirit and uh if we were them and lived their lives in their in, in existed in their circumstances we probably wouldn't be very much different and and so there's so many people that don't have that inner peace and, and live in a kind of inner violence that that they're almost looking for something to fight about and things like this give people who want to fight and who want to enjoy that that drama that that excitement it gives them an excuse but it's better if we live in in a, a quiet peaceful existence with with god with the love it's all about i i would agree with that and i think that that message can be uh portrayed in a way that it doesn't matter 
what side of the aisle you're on, whether we're talking about politics, whether we're talking about baseball, whether we're talking about, as you say in your article here, for the feuding nations, for the feuding tribes, for the feuding parties, um, doesn't matter where you fall. Doesn't matter if you're on the right or the left, up, down, left, right, whatever. It's it's up to each one of us, regardless of our affiliation, to take a step back, have a little empathy, and say, okay, at best, let's meet in the middle. At worst, let's at least know that, although we may disagree, we're in the same game together. Yes, and, and let's respect each other. And, and when I find that when you really get to, uh, get to the heart of, of, of arguments, usually you find out that people want the same thing. They want to have a, a, a loving family. They want to have security and enough prosperity to live. And they, they want a good life. That's, that's basic. We might disagree about how to get to that point. But let's at least listen to each other because I don't think that anyone – has all the right answers. So that person you disagree with, maybe there's actually a kernel of truth, and maybe you can learn something from from uh, their perspective as well. And uh, so, yeah, we we have we live in a very contentious time. Yeah. And there was a huge response to this article, and I believe that's why, because someone was saying. Hey, let's let's love each other. And I had one one Twitter person said, uh, I read this as a bedtime story to my daughters. I didn't think they understood it, but I thought it was good parenting. <laughs> I, that's that's fantastic. That's the idea of saying I got to I got to plant the seed somewhere, whether they get it yeah. or not. But um, have you had? Can you talk about some of the responses that you've gotten to this article? I mean, you, you just gave us a great a great example of, of what happened. Have you had any unfortunate responses? I mean, what, what can um, you tell us? I have not, I've had other uh, beautiful responses like that. Um, um, I was told uh, that this morning somebody came on to the website and, and started trolling the article in the comments section. Um, but I haven't seen those comments yet. And one of the other, one of the other editors, uh, deleted them although Good. i can still i can still see them but mm -hmm. uh so no it's been an overwhelming uh, positive response and it's been extremely rewarding and, and heartwarming to me to, to 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 know that by sitting down for 30 minutes uh, at 3 a.m and 2 a.m in the morning and just writing from my heart that i could touch people like that i i almost didn't publish it i mean it was too sincere it was too personal and I thought, no one wants to read this. <laughs> it turns out it's gotten more reads than anything on uh, on SB Nation for a real, real long time. What's crazy is that, you know, you, you, you mentioned how we're all deep down, we're all the same. We kind of want the same thing. And this article is the vehicle to exposing that, to saying that, you know what, there are a lot of people who do agree with the sentiment. And maybe they don't have the courage to come out uh, or they don't have the opportunity to come out, uh, you know, to, to say it the way that you said it. But you, it's being used as a uniting force to really exemplify the good sportsmanship that deep down I think we all have somewhere, whether yes. we suppress it or not or we don't know how to access it. But this is, this is a, a major step in, in that journey. And it shouldn't be taken lightly. I mean, I just look at the look at the grace and the and the you know the the chance meeting that you know as I'm googling stuff on Marisnik, your article popped up, and here we are. You know, I I don't see that as a coincidence. So you know, I'm glad you published it to put it lightly. Well, thank you. And you said it better than me. That's and that's exactly why I, I I'm so gratified by the response for all those reasons. Uh, it's just it's it's amazing i didn't i just write about sports and uh that i was able actually to, to touch people is 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 uh just <laughs> i'm still kind of you know, i'm still kind of thrilled by it yeah. it's amazing and that's one of the things our organization does it's we 
we try to reach out to people, our local community, about good acts of sportsmanship. And I feel like this story is a perfect example of that. Well, not only that, I'll double down on this. Not only did Marisnik show good sportsmanship, but but Bill here showed good sportsmanship. Yep. You know, so we it's a it's a twofer. You know, this is this is building off of it and really making a name for it in a community that is miles away from us. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're we're just stuck in the middle of central New Jersey and out there in Houston, we've made a connection. And and that that's another th- that another kind of division that we see too much of is is geographic division. You know, right. those those Yankees, those ignorant Southerners, you know, those those fruit and nuts people, you know. We're all people. Right. Right. We can I, I would, I, go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, I can I, I can playfully jab at my girlfriend who's a Red Sox fan as and I'm a Yankees fan. I mean, that's uh, the fact that that's that tough. listen, that relationship has been going on for almost nine years. And uh, there are a couple of local craft breweries that I keep in business because of it. That being said. You know, it's a perfect way to say, listen, we can we can playfully jab at each other in the privacy of our own home. But, you know, in public, we're you know, we're we're trying to be nice to each other as yeah. best as we can. I mean, it's kind of hard because it's, you know, it's, you, you, you don't want to be nice to your partner, but the law it's, it's, says you have to. That's really hard. I mean, Red Sox and Yankees relationship, that's got to be the hardest. So you, you're definitely living the dream there. Oh, my as God. Far as sportsmanship Listen, goes. <laughs> I, I tell her I didn't realize until after the first date that she was a Red Sox fan. You know, you've, I found her on social media after that first date. And I said to her, if I had known this 24 hours beforehand... <laughs> There would not have been a first date, and that's, uh, I just, God works in strange and mysterious ways, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's, my, my boss at um, at SB Nation is a um, Yankee, w- w- ran the Yankee uh, website, Pinstripe Valley. Oh, really? And um, T- Tanya Bondurant, and uh-huh. um, she, um, I didn't know that, and I just mentioned in passing in a conversation that I thought that the Red Sox broadcasting team. Because I, I listen to sometimes I listen to, to the uh, uh, national broadcast instead of the local one. Right. That the the Red Sox have a really good broadcasting team, a lot of real knowledgeable people, and apparently they have a pretty sophisticated fan base. And boy, she reacted like, "No, <laughs> that, that's not true." No. <laughs> No, no. Joe Castiglione knows nothing of what of baseball on the radio, and and Dave O'Brien doesn't deserve to be on TV on Nesson. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, That's uh, funny. There's one thing I'd like to add. Um, Please do. You, the floor is yours to to add everything and anything you want right now. I think that Jake Marisnik could not have calmed down that bench without other people, leaders on that team who already had that spirit. Um, This is a team, the core of which has a great deal of humility. George Springer, who has had to overcome this stuttering problem, he was a terrible victim of of, of ridicule and abuse when he was a a teenager because of his stuttering. And he he found his, his, he was able to express his spirit through baseball Here's another man who's really very gentle at heart, and and um, Carlos Correa, who wasn't there that day, but obviously another team leader who who came from desperate pro- poverty um, in, in in Puerto Rico and had to make so many sacrifices um, to to get where he got. There's a there's a gentleness about these core players that I think is exceptional, and uh, so Jake wasn't alone in being able to mobilize a a um, a peaceful spirit i mean it it's in the culture of that clubhouse for the most part and i'll double down on that you know i know he's not there anymore but former yankee former astro brian mccann i think also was someone who helped foster that i mean i think he was a fantastic leader for the time that he was there and, yes, he was. and and you know knew how to uh, command respect just by doing his job, and he was yes. a leader both on and off the field. And you know I can't recall a time 
that, you know, McCann, you know, got himself into any trouble or, or, or anything like that. I mean, the, the dude just knew how to be a, not only a ball player, but a, a good human being. So, you know, as much as, you know, I am still losing sleep over the uh, ALCS a few years ago. If Todd Frazier's <laughs> ball just went a little farther, you know, and I'd, you've you've hit on a lot of good points, and it's hard to uh, it's it's hard to hate the Astros based upon this. To put it to put it bluntly, you know, it's uh, it's it's a fun. First of all, they're a fantastic team. You know, they're they're right up there with the Yankees this year in being. Uh, probably the two best teams in the American League, and it's going to be fun come October. You know, yeah, it, it is. It, it's going to be a, a heck of a postseason, and I just I can't wait. You know, I I'll be it'll be fun to see both teams healthy. Yeah, that's for uh, sure. You know, hopefully yeah, neither team's been played each other with with their health in, intact. Uh, yeah, it'll be a. Um, I tell you, people in Houston definitely respect the Yankees this year. It's a strong oh, yeah. team. This, I mean, <laughs> both of the, both of these teams, as much as there's part of me that kind of wants to see a, uh, a Yankees twins ALCS, I think a Yankees Astros ALCS could be just as classic this year, assuming that no more massage therapists break anybody's ribs, you know, yeah. but uh, other than that, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> Now, why would you want to see the Twins more than the Astros? Uh, just because I haven't seen them in, in forever. That's yeah, the only are, reason. I'm afraid of them because I think they're a, a team of destiny. The oh. Astros were a team of destiny in 2017, and I'm afraid the Twins might be that this year. Of course, that's you know a lot of people let say, yeah, you're crazy, but but <laughs> I, be- you, I, do, I believe there's such a thing, and, listen, uh, and the Twins might be it. I I went down and saw the Twins in spring training this year. And I was I was blown away. It, you know, just the beginning of spring training, I was like, "Wow, this team can do something special." And and that's why I think that it's no coincidence that they've taken over the the AL Central and the the three teams at the top of the divisions in the American League. It's gonna be it's gonna be a heck of a ride. As it much is. as as much as I dislike October because it means that baseball's ending, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. It's going to be it fun, uh, be Bill. Good. I want I want to end just with one quote that you wrote in your article. You said at the end, as a great saint, what said, "Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me." And I think that is the perfect way to sum up not just your take on this whole thing, but this entire discussion. And I cannot thank you enough for popping on with us and, and giving us a couple of minutes. Uh, I, I know I speak for Sean when I say this was a blast. And oh, absolutely! I, th- I think this is a very powerful message. And I hope that this article and everything that you stand for uh, blossoms infinitely and 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 goes to places that you you would never imagine. So thank you from the bottom of our heart for for being with us today. Well, thank you for reaching out, and I've really enjoyed our conversation. It's been our pleasure, uh, and we'll be sure to be speaking to you down the road. Hopefully, after oh, let's do it again. Uh, hopefully, Absolutely. after some uh, some time has cooled off in in October, and we're not we're not throwing things <laughs> yeah. at the TV. Yeah. Okay. We'll do it during I, the off season. It. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to be. Part, I'd love to help your organization. It, I, I believe in what you're, you stand for. So. Well, thank know, you, let's and keep the, in touch. Ab, you, you bet. And uh, as soon as my frequent flyer miles allow it, we'll we'll take a trip out there to see you. So. Oh man, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when there's a Yankees game in the minute, mate. But... <laughs> uh, amen. They got to stop scheduling okay. so darn early next year. All right. All right, Bill. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, that does it for this episode of uh, How You Play the Game. My thanks to uh, Bill Metzger from uh, crawfishboxes.com. Sean, my thanks to you as well. Thank you. And we'll be back uh, in just a couple of weeks with uh, some more fun stuff. We've got fantastic episodes coming your way. we got an episode on uh, sportsmanship in the music business that you're not going to want to miss. So uh, until next time, everybody, thank you. And as always, treat each other with respect. How You Play the Game is a production of the OSIP Foundation, Incorporated. The producer-engineer of this episode is Sean Ryan. Music by SoundSpring Studio. The executive producer of How You Play the Game is Jack Furlong. For more information, visit osipfoundation.org.